One you look seven. marvelous. You look marvelous. We're ready. Are you ready? In three and two. Mary, is she ready? She's definitely ready. She's ready. In three and two. One. <laughs> To land this Mr. Fish. Walter Gretzky, how are you, sir? Oh, I'm fine. I'm still standing beside you. Hey, wow. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Just go ahead and pinch me. Go on now. Their craft has twin 40-foot wooden schooners, the traditional kind. Hey, everybody. I'm Stephanie Beaumont. Welcome to this special edition of CNBC. Scene. Our East Coast show is on the road, west through the air, and partying down at the Company Theater's annual shindig. Co-artistic directors Alan Hocko and Phil Riccio, together with a whole bunch of their talented friends, have gathered to raise money for the Company Theatre at 3030 in Toronto. And CNBC was thrilled to share in the fun. So over the course of the next half hour, we'll give you a glimpse of the great night filled with East Coast folks and kindred spirits. We'll chat with some special guests, hear some truly cool tunes, get some scoop, and dole out some free stuff too. With all that ahead, let's get you Get in on the action, beginning with the MCs for the night, two stellar NL fellas, Alan Hocko and Mark Critch. Now, uh, it's, it's an incredible event. It's great to be here. We have grown. We have grown from previous years into a bigger venue. That's because of your support. Thank you very much. What a great spot. I've always said that theater was a fancy uh, way of lying. And I think that's what we're supporting here, is lying. Uh, it's a one of the company theater. Uh, how many people here have been to company theater shows before? And the rest of you will after tonight. Alan, tell us a little bit. So, uh, myself, Diane Buckford, and Philip Riccio started the company theater in 2004. And uh, it's been a, a big passion of ours over the years, and we make some really great work. And Phil Riccio's been running the company uh, since I abandoned him in 2007, so I'd like to call our artistic director, Mr. Philip Riccio, to come up and uh, say a few words. We're a performance-focused uh, company. We've been uh, around for uh, 11 years now. We try to produce the best theater that we can with uh, the best actors from around Canada. And our last performance was Domesticated, starring Paul Gross and Martha Burns, which we did at Canadian Stage. Uh, unfortunately, I can't share with you what our next production is going to be, so I would ask you to stay tuned, though. We're going to come out with some news about that very soon, and the money that we're raising tonight is going to go towards that production. So thank you very much for being part of the Canadian culture scene and uh, helping theatre grow and thrive in the city. Actually, I do this whole event basically so that I can see Alan once a year. It's the only way he'll hang out with me, so thank you all for giving me that excuse. All right, great. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, of course, there's all kinds of entertainment here tonight, too, isn't there, Al? Yeah, we're going to have some great musical guests, and let's start it off with our, our friend and uh, the most uh, talented man of the thousand billion songs, Mr. Barry Canning. Barry Canning, ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> to a quieter spot for some chats and as luck would have it catch the cool folks as they're coming in <laughs> ladies and gentlemen look who it is i mean when was the last time i saw you i actually can't remember Such it was years ago i remember it fond was it in newfoundland no it was in a place called hubbard's at the shore club. oh yeah that's right the right? shore club yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Around, nova scotia Aaron, you don't know this but you've been on my show countless times oh really and mo most uh, recently, really, The Forsaken. Well, 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 I heard a lot about you. Where are my royalties? Um, <laughs> my people will call you. 
<laughs> I have no people. Um, but listen, Aaron, I want to just ask you because that was the very first time that Donald and Kiefer mm -hmm. acted together in a movie. And I know mm -hmm. you're you're a wildly veteran when it comes to film work, but what was that experience like? Oh, it was amazing working with the both of them, and they both have completely different styles. Is that true? Yeah, oh yeah. Define absolutely. them. Well, uh, Donald's crotchety, old, entitled, brilliant actor, and <laughs> and Kiefer is entitled, middle-aged, brilliant actor. And they both you of them... You can't fault them for that, though, Oh, right? God, no. Oh, no, no, no. I said they're brilliant, and yeah, I'm not using enough. that loosely. They're both fair amazingly enough. talented. And so they would uh, they would try to hold their authority in a multiplicity of ways. God is not responsible for the life you choose. I did not choose it! Okay. Yeah. So Here's the thing that, because we, we're out on the East Coast, well, we may not be um, akin to this inner circle and the inner workings of Toronto, <laughs> but you and Alan Hocko go way back, right? And Phil Riccio? Like, yeah, yeah, back. Phil, Alan, and I uh, were in the company theater's first play together. They cast me in Whistle in the Dark, and then they kept me on when we moved to Newfoundland, and I think that was the first time that I saw Newfoundland was uh, doing Whistle in the Dark through and Alan. you've been in Doyle twice. Is that right? I have As been in two Doyle. different people. Was I two different people? No, I looked different, but I was you the, were the same, same guy. guy. I was I was supposed to be the same guy, okay, <laughs> but I had like long enough. hair and a beard the second time. I totally loved myself. But you were though. the same guy. <laughs> the well, that's character because was Susan Kent did a real number on you. Yeah, she right? did. She ruined me. Yeah, yeah. She as she does every man. I love how. <laughs> I love I the, the, the wave of panic in Aaron's eyes. Like, how does she know I've been on twice? Does she is she that stalker that keeps tweeting me? Yes, I am, Aaron. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. You're no, welcome. But I must say, you have been on my show a lot. And so it's awesome that we ran into you here tonight and you're in support. Now, will you ever be back in another company theater? Can we look forward to that? I, I hope so. Yeah, I would yeah. love I, I would love for you it love to work. love the stage versus the... I have no preference. No, I prefer the camera, but I, I've been hungry for the stage. do-overs, right, in, in film, where it's not yeah. so much in the live Yeah, theater. if you and I fail a lot. <laughs> so no, I fail. They actually run me off the stage. I'm so excited to run into you tonight. I'm gonna let you get I was in really good I to see you. I literally accosted Aaron as he walked in the door. It's so really God good. love you for making the time. And um, <laughs> well, I'll just keep my distance. I think that's what the restraining order says, right? It's, 60 feet? It, Is it 60 it's, or 30? It's only applicable on the East Coast, though. So that's why we're on camera in Ontario. Thanks so much for regional politics and laws. Still ahead on CNBC. Thanks to Google Maps and my GPS chip that I embedded in Alan the last time we talked, <laughs> I've tracked him down in Toronto. How you doing? We'll also talk to Alan's company theater co-founder and his Hyena Road co-star. But up next, his Republic of Doyle teammate, both off and on the ice. Ladies and gentlemen, who knew this would be a sporting event? Terry Ryan and the house. Well, actually outside, because they won't let us in yet. Oh, they won't let us in. Okay, I just let you in. Well, <laughs> best-selling author. Who knows? Superstar hockey player. Stand-up comedian now. Who knows? You really. Let's just salute you now, if I don't, if you don't mind. Uh, held the Doyle team together, countless times on the ice, sir. On the ice, yes, right? and off the ice, Hawk takes care of me, and well, I'm happy. What do you do? What's your role? Because you have a big role on on the crew, right? Yeah, I guess. Uh, geez, um, for Frontier, I was a stand-in, and I had. A couple of. Did you stand in? Can you say? Uh, I it's guess. Very top secret that production. It, it certainly is. Uh, I guess I was. Added me down after my on. It was onset. a good job. It was a good job. I stood there while the real actors went and did their thing for shadows and light, basically. It was cold. It Were was you on cold. Location? Um, yeah, it was cold, but I, and I had a couple of. Uh, I had a speaking role in there, and it got me into the acting union, and I'm uh, pretty happy about it. Thank you, Alan. Uh, basically, and Rob Blackie and Peter Blackie and those guys. That's a big production. You and I are not allowed to divulge anything, but let's f be fair to say people are going to be blown away. I think they will be, uh, by, by not by my performance <laughs> by any means, but they'll be blown away by the whole thing. Yeah, it was, uh, this is all in, uh, not to downplay anything that we've done before, no. Republic of Doyle or any of that, but this is another step in, in a different direction that 
I think for creative people like the Hawk and the people who, you know, produced it and wrote it and everything without going into every name, I think it's a, a step in a different direction and it shows you their creative process is not just limited to the Republic of Doyle. Right. Fair enough. Well, let's talk about the creative process because you are a best-selling author now. Can we look... Wow, I dodged that one. <laughs> there, I'm on the lamb here in Toronto. <laughs> I don't mind saying. I keep it a low profile. But Terry Ryan, let's talk. Are you? Is there another book in the works? Do you think? Or? There is. Yeah, there is. And I'm working on, uh, you know, trying to make it into uh, something different, like maybe a movie or or whatever. So uh, I guess this is the first that you'll know about it. You're the first person I've ever said that to. That's part of the why I'm here in Toronto. I'm doing a. I'm up here now indefinitely, but I mean, home's going to be back and forth. Right. But um, wow. yeah, I'm doing a lot of stand-up comedy, if you can believe we're that. Getting, well, you're a very funny guy, but I'm oh. lucky we're getting you now because now you'll have people around you. I'll never get close to you. I'll be like, Darren! You'll be like, who no, are you? I don't think that'll ever happen. Time to take our first break here at the Company Theatre Shindig, but when we return, we'll chat with an Emmy Award-winning director who fell in love with Newfoundland while filming Republic of Doyle, and we'll meet a group of die-hard Republic of Doyle fans who fell in love with its star. We'll be right back. You're watching TV One, your community station. Welcome back to this special edition of CNBC Scene. We're in Toronto taking in the sights and sounds of the company theater's annual shindig. Now back to the main stage with Mark Critch and Alan Hocko. And of course, uh, wouldn't be a wonderful event, a fundraising event, without some auction items and tickets on things. Uh, we call it back in Newfoundland, we call that a draw, don't we? We're having a draw in the office. Yeah. Not, not the kind of draw you big city folks might think. Back home is just tickets spinning on a wheel. One ticket holding up the wheel. Uh, we have wonderful items uh, on the raffle here, like a signed Raptors jersey. <laughs> Anyone knows Drake? You'd be interested in that. Original art pieces, all kinds of art, lovely art. Uh, Republic of Doyle swag. <laughs> People here are big fans of TV shows that aren't on anymore. <laughs> We also have some King of, Ken King of Kensington swag and some swag from Webster. <laughs> you how many times sir uh, that Alan Hocko has basically said you run the joint right but this is the man behind the company theater that's true yeah I <laughs> know yeah. oh, really on a day-to-day -day basis you're in the trenches yeah I mean we, we uh, used to be the two of us and then Alan uh, you know went off to do Republic of Doyle and I, I thought it was gonna continue to be the two of us naively I thought he could just you know write produce star in a TV show and run a theater company at the same right. time but not apparently all. not apparently he can't do that yeah he sort of hinted and we've got a gl uh, we gleaned that um, that you've got something massive but you won't tell us give us a hint now is it a comedy is it a love story <laughs> It's got a little bit of everything, actually. Yes, it does, actually. It's a pretty epic uh, piece. I, I, I can't say what it is just because we haven't confirmed when it's going to be and where it's going to be. Because what happens? Like, take us through the process now, because we just show up right. and we enjoy the production. But take me through, like, do you just sit around and go, you know what we should do? Or does somebody write it? Or how, how does it work? Well, we mostly do um, plays from around the world, international contemporary plays. So we, because we're performance focused, we don't uh, do anything. We don't do new plays okay. so that the focus is on performance, not on the writing of the play and so rehearsal. established productions would be a fair assessment. Yeah, okay. but usually they're Canadian premieres. Okay. So, I, you know, we've done plays from Germany, Switzerland, United States, Britain, uh, pretty much any English-speaking country and okay. other countries, Australia. Uh, and so we import those plays, essentially, and do the Canadian premiere with a Canadian artistic team. What about casting now? Like, how does that work? Two huge stars in your last one, many in the previous one before. Like, how does that work? I mean, casting is certainly, it's the most fun part of it, for is sure. It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I mean, we have so many great actors in this country, so to get to pair them with parts. The great thing about Canadian actors, I find, is they're, re they, they're really excited about challenges. Yeah. And they all, most Canadian actors do th all theater, film, and TV. So I get really excited about bringing back great theater actors that go on and do TV film and then bring them back, stealing them back for the stage is right. something that we're, we get excited about for sure. Cool. I can't wait to hear what this is. It's going to be, it's, it's going to be exciting. People will be excited. Is it same time next year? It's not, is it? It's not same time next year. Do you think Mark O'Brien and Georgina Riley? I'm just putting that out there for future. I, I actually cool? really like that idea. Yeah. Did you see my tweet about that? I did see your tweet, tweet, and I thought that was a great idea. And I would also, I would love Mark O'Brien and Georgina to work with us yeah. because I think they're both fantastic actors. They're like the um, um, Burton and, and Taylor of our time, don't you think? Hopefully, but hopefully their relationship might be a little strong. bit stronger. Who are we to judge, though, right, Bill? <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like I know you. It's one of those things where I follow you on Twitter. I know all the things that are going <laughs> yeah. on, and I've, yeah. I've, you were on my site and on my show. Yeah, 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 you know yeah. That? I think I did probably just because true? of some. Yes, because of various Multiple reasons. Mostly Alan Hawker, probably. Well, Belleville for yes. one. Yes. Right. And then, uh, of course, uh, we celebrated on the East Coast. We were there for the Atlantic premiere of Hyena Road. Oh, um, great! You were here yeah, for the yeah, Atlantic yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but we were happy to show it on the coast. And yeah. my God, what a performance! Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, what was that like? Because you're a little, you're a minute, as we would call you on all the right. East Coast, <laughs> to wear all the gear and the garb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, my my job was mostly. Uh, I had to do a lot. I didn't have to do all the same uh, physical heavy lifting that those boys had to do. They were like, all they were doing was working out and eating chicken, yeah. basically. <laughs> like, that was it. Right. I was like, you know, eating whatever I wanted and just learning a bunch of acronyms. So my, my task on that film was very different because it was all about the language. Yeah. It wasn't about how much can you carry. We're here tonight to celebrate the company theater mm -hmm. and you are part of that company. Mm -hmm. What is that like to be... Yeah, it's nice to be sort of included in, in an ensemble. Is it in an like a team? Like, like, do you like how does it work in the theater? Well, world? I mean, for this particular thing, it's basically like if if you sort of have done some work with company theater, they sort of like will take you in as one of their kind of ensemble members. So we do kind of become part of that. Your team community. shirts or anything? No. We have mugs. I have a mug. She's got a mug and a byline. Christine's article, Wrestling with Success, is just one of the many wonderful personal essays you'll find in the company theater's newest initiative, Intermission Magazine. Filled with in-depth articles, revealing interviews, and lots of funny editorials, all focused on the stories behind the stories on the stage. If you're looking for your online theater fix, well, you'll find it at intermissionmagazine.ca. Now, if you've tuned into this episode looking for your Hako fix, Wait no more. It's time to catch up and hear what he's got on the go and salute the man on 11 great years with the company theater. Uh, yeah, that's right, 11 years. Wow. A bit more than that, but officially 11 years. And Phil has officially said, yes, I do everything. Because I said, you know what, Phil, i got to be honest with you. In every interview I do with Alan, he gives you all the credit. And he said, he should. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil and I started the company together um, as two actors, like which is a very strange combination of two different artistic minds and two male actors the same age who want the same, same thing. parts. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> All the same parts. Oh. Like you'd imagine that two male actors would be in competition for something like that, but Phil and I have always sort of managed to skate around that issue. And uh, in 2007-ish, I bailed on him to go home and... and, and uh, Do Doyle. It was, it was kind of to go home and follow my, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, and then Doyle kind of happened as a result of that. But it's a real love story. It's true. I still get a warm and fuzzy feeling because I remember I interviewed Alan for Atlantic Business Magazine, and it was the first time we had ever really talked about the oh, lovely so, so. Carolyn Stokes, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I mean to hear that side of this guy, it's lovely. It's lovely. Well, I'm it's serious. very it's very nice. No, she's a she's a she's a great 
great person. And and I went home sort of to to I followed her home. Yeah. And uh, from that, everything kind of just came together. See? But I abandoned Phil. Destiny takes a hand. But Phil really held it down. And every year you're putting on these incredible productions. And Phil uh, enlightened us a little bit. The, the mission, if you will, and you can see it on the Company Theatre page, is really to bring in these productions from around the world and give them a Canadian premiere. Is that fair? Sort of, yeah. Like it's the fi uh, fi not necessarily the productions, but the plays. Finding international voices that aren't necessarily known to a Canadian audience. So... You know, Tom Murphy uh, uh, is is an example. Was the first show we ever did. It was an Irish playwright who had never been professionally performed in, in Canada. So, finding these sort of pockets of of brilliant talent, and then we get the rights to the play and put them on ourselves. And now, caught. Just give us a little, because what can you tell us? Anything? Uh, yeah, we're we're in the middle of breaking the uh, and writing the six uh, episode adaptation. So it'll be six what episodes. What does that mean, breaking for the people playing the home game? Like breaking out the plot and the episodes. You know, if you got six hours, it's going to be six different episodes. So you want to make sure that all the through lines are all carried through, and you've got all the uh, necessary plot, and you've got all the character base, and you break that all out with some writers, and you throw it all on the wall, and you map it out, and you make sure that it doesn't that it all sings, and then you put it all on paper and you it's keep a lot going. of work never stops all right and the only other thing I want to talk to you about because I think that might be the next thing that we actually are allowed to see is the child remains oh, yeah, which right. we haven't talked about but I saw the marquee for it and it looks quite scary oh I haven't even seen it does it look good well it's scary I mean do you yeah. like the horror movies Alan Hocko uh, uh, the exorcist freaked me out right I believe we should begin but deliver us from the evil one <laughs> I was thinking, what horror movie did I just see that scared the beep out of me? It was the trailer for Brad Payton's Incarnate. I know, cool, hey? Cameron, this is not real. You're gonna burn. Oh my god. Hey, and Brad Payton is somebody that we never got to meet on, on Frontier, but there's a pal. It part of the Hako sort of circle of friends that's Gander coming Boy. back right gander academy right yeah he's a great fellow yeah and 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 uh, just what we're talking about gander sarah canning is in uh planet of the a war of the apes is sarah canning from gander yes <laughs> did you know that i knew she was from home like but she's I didn't no know relation gander. to jordan canning but they're really good friends oh yeah she's amazing they're great yeah. newfoundland I, all newfoundland the way is rocking okay davna doyle, davna doyle. oh my god i love her okay hi Ladies and gentlemen, the gorgeous and talented Davina Doyle. Wow, that's going to go viral. Did you go and let my be with you out walking in the wilderness? Hunting wolves and learning hunting dogs. the coolest. I love Davenant Doyle and I love free stuff so let's start doling it out. Up for grabs in celebration of Alan's forthcoming CBC series Caught, we've got a copy of the book on which it's based. Indeed the award-winning best-selling book by Newfoundland-born author Lisa Moore could be yours and in salute of tonight's other MC, Mr. Mark Critch, we've got a cool ball hat from his mega award-winning show, This Hour Has 22 Minutes. Both those prizes can be yours if you can tell us which classic horror movie did Alan Hocko confess freaked him out. I think that movie freaked everybody out. Well, once you know it, hit the website at cnbc.com, click on the TV Free Stuff button, and submit your answer. Good luck to ya, and we'll be back with lots more fun from the Company Theatre Shindig. You're watching TV One, your community station.
This episode of CNBC TV is brought to you in part by the beautiful riverside town of New Glasgow, Nova Scotia. Rich in history and energized by community spirit, make a trip to their year-round farmer's market for fresh local fare or take in one of their many festivals and you'll discover a dynamic place to visit, to live, and to flourish. For more information, visit newglasgow.ca. By the 59th Annual Festival of Tartans from July 13th to the 17th, enjoy five days filled with events for all ages. From piping and drumming to highland dancing, Scottish heavyweight events to a tartan tea, golfing, antique car show, Scottish church service, and more. For the full scoop, visit festivalofthetartans.ca. And by the new Glasgow Farmer's Market, first annual from Market to Main Street. On August 27th, Provo Street will be filled with marvelous music and fantastic food prepared by Chef Jason Conway and made with ingredients sourced from local producers and vendors found at the new Glasgow Farmer's Market. It's a first of its kind event you won't want to miss. For more info and tickets, visit ngfarmmarket.com. Welcome back to this special edition of CNB Scene. We've left Atlanta, Canada and headed west to meet up with East Coast folks and kindred spirits for the company theater shindig we were so thrilled to be invited and ever so grateful to dahlia katz who graciously shared her incredible photographs of the evening for use in this episode as you can tell from her amazing pics it was quite a night and so wonderful to see the tremendous support for the company theater from the talent on stage to the crowd that came to take it all in friends fans and as you might imagine one or two award-winning co-workers. You never know who you're gonna rub shoulders with in Toronto. Ladies and gentlemen, Emmy Award-winning director, Mr. Skinny. I'm just gonna salute you. Is that <laughs> oh, well, you don't have to salute. Wow. I will bow to you. That's so exciting. Now as a director, how does that feel? That was really exciting. It was a real surprise. And, and what, what made it even more uh, precious is that it was for a kid's show yes. with a very small budget. And so here we are competing with the big American shows, and we win the Emmy. Now, what I love about you, I follow you on Twitter, so I know that you are everywhere. Many episodes of Heartland you've done, yeah. which is in the middle of Canada. Right, that's, and that's right. that's fun and exciting. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's a terrific show. But I love how you embrace St. John's. Oh, my right. gosh. St. John's became like a second home for us. Six seasons, five summers. My whole family would come out every summer, yeah. made friends. We just became part of the culture there. Right. Such a wonderful place, such great people. Yes. The city itself, it just, it's terrific. Right, and, and not a bad cast to work with. Okay. This, this cast was like a gift. Yeah. This cast is an embarrassment of riches, let me tell you. So what's that energy like for, because you're really parachuting in, it's an existing squad, and then mm. you're telling them what to do. How does that work? Well, the, the beauty of everybody out in St. John's is that they're, not only are they um, passionate about what they do, they're all artists. And they're all wonderful, embracing people. They, they, anybody that came from away, the second we got off the plane, they said, no, you're coming with us. Aww. And they took us in yes. and they made us part of the family, nice. which then permitted us to kind of just let it all go and, and enjoy them, work with these people, learn from these people, yes. and come up with the show that we did, which was really quite beautiful and exciting. And it, it had the heart and soul of everybody in it. Now, I want to ask you, again, as a director who's directed many, the chemistry between Alan Hocko and Kristen Pellerin was really special. Their chemistry was immediate. The second that they would get within a few feet of each other, it was just, it would sizzle. We would stand back and just let it happen. When, when Kristen and, and Alan would get together in a scene, and the beauty of it is, prior to saying action, they're goofing around, they're playing. The minute you say action, bam! It's like they were just connected. And it was so much fun. Well, since we're on the topic of fun and a special connection with Alan Hocko, we've got to introduce you to Team Awesome. United in their passion for all things Republic of Doyle, most especially the man who starred as Jake. As an actor, that kind of support is priceless, although tonight it cost one of those fans a grand. What's up,
if you could, camera guy Tim, pan down. And, and while they are lovely shoes, we're looking at the tattoo. That, now that's just one of those rub-ons, right, Janet? Oh yeah, sure. No, it's real. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, four of what I like to call the Hako Hotties, but apparently you have a real handle, it's called what? Team Awesome. Team Awesome. And let me just say this, they just scored an awesome prize. Uh, what, what is it? Janet Robinson, take us through it. Yes, um, I just bid on a prize to have um, a, uh, a walk-on on cot. You get a walk-on? A walk-on on cot. And I thought it was just you hang out on the set. Uh, hang out on the set, I'm pretty sure it was a walk-on. And dinner with the, with the cast. Uh, and actually, Alan mentioned on stage that it would include all of Team Awesome. Okay, now I'm just going to go from a, a camera left to right. Is it camera right? A, you are? Miranda. And you are? Janet. And you are? Anita. Stephanie. Now, Stephanie, I know, lives in Toronto. That's right. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And now, Anita, where did you come from? Brandon, Manitoba. And Janet, where are you? London, Ontario. I mean, and Miranda? Fredericton, New Brunswick. And they come from all over because they love them, because yeah. they are awesome. Now, us met for the first time tonight. See, and, but they're united in their love for Alan Hocko, as am I. I want to tell you that my membership to Team Awesome is still pending. <laughs> oh, no, you're I welcome to join. <laughs> no, you're totally in. Totally in. <laughs> Now you can watch this episode and all the other great TV One programs anytime you want. Simply click the On Demand button on your Bell Alliant Fiber Op TV remote and follow the steps on your screen. And be sure to visit our site at cnbc.com where we're celebrating six years of celebrating Canada's awesome East Coast. Oh sure, it's our sixth birthday, but we're giving you all the presents. All throughout the month of July, win daily prizes and qualify for a stellar stay at one of our favorite properties in Atlantic Canada. Blue on Water in St. John's, Newfoundland, Ocean Stone Resort in Indian Harbor, Nova Scotia, the Algonquin Resort in St. Andrews by the Sea, New Brunswick, and the Inn at Bay Fortune on Prince Edward Island. Head to CNBCN.com and get in on the winning. Once every two years I get together with these fellas and always for a wonderful cause. We're in the house for uh, the company theater. Uh, and Patty Boyle, who knew that you were going to be, I mean, you're a headliner. I, I just started up tonight, you know, and I kind of helped line everything up a little bit. This is my eighth year, I think, doing this. You were the so. front domino. Yeah. I was. Yes. That was, was great. You never know who's going to show up like this fella. I'm just I in know. town, hanging out, right? having fun with friends. But uh, that's it. It's friends. It's mm -hmm. camaraderie. Yeah, we support each yeah, other support. a lot. Yeah. You know, we're a pretty tight little community. We love each other dearly. Barry, you were up there performing tonight. You nailed it again, as all. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was and, fun. And, and he didn't bring his horn tonight. I know. I uh, I heard just before we went on that he was showing up. I was hoping he was going to have a case in his hand. Nothing. I was hoping he was going to bring his horn, case. too, but that's a different story altogether. <laughs> <laughs> the camera is going off. <laughs> The camera, he's like, should I keep the camera on? Bars and tone, boys. Bars and tone. Yeah, yeah.